Welcome all you pre-calculus remote learners. We're going to be modeling with sinus level functions today. We're going to be working with a problem that says a spring is hanging from a ceiling. Okay, um, The length L of T in centimeters of the spring is a function of time. can be modeled by this form. We're going to be putting it in this form. It says at T equals zero, the spring is exactly in the middle. It's going to be important that you know. In the middle, that's kind of giving us a hint of what the midline is going to be. So our midline is going to be at 7 centimeters. And then it says after half of a second, the spring is going to reach its maximum length, which is going to be 12 centimeters. So we're just going to use these two pieces of information, and we're going to build a function here, L of t. And uh, we're going to use t instead of x or theta. That's going to be in radians. So we're going to go over here to our drawing board. All right. So right here, we have a, a little graph, right? It's kind of just a picture of a, what a spring would look like if it was hanging from a ceiling. So I just kind of put that picture in. These measurements have no meaning to our problem. Right now, I've already drawn the midline in. The midline is right here at y equals 7. y equals 7. So that means our d value is going to be at a 7. Now you'll notice over here I've um, taken away the c value. Um, there's going to be no phase shift, so I'm just going to put a point right here at 0 and a 7. So we're at here at 0, comma 7. And we're going to plot the other point, which is going to be at half of a second going to be all the way up at 12 centimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break things down a little bit easier. All right, so I'm going to break these down in quarters. So I'm going to put, this is going to be 0.25. This right here is going to be at 0 0.50. Makes it a little bit easier to plot. So right here we're at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm just going to put a point here. And I'm going to call that 0.5, 12, and that's going to be known as its maximum height. Next, we're going to kind of start the drawing here of what it's going to look like. It's going to go up. It's going to reach its maximum height. Then you'll kind of notice from here it should go back down to the midline right about here. And this is not going to be a perfect drawing, but it should suffice for what we're trying to do. And it's going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down, and the bottom out right there, and then it's going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to draw it, so I was breaking it into quarters. All right, and that's going to be our, our drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to interpret this drawing, we're going to find our, our A value, all right? And just remember, the absolute value of A will be our amplitude. And once again, the amplitude is the distance from the maximum to the midline, or from the minimum to the midline. All right, so we can kind of see what our amplitude is. Amplitude is going to be 5 units, all right? So you can see from 0, 7 to a point or half in a 12, that distance is going to be 5. This is a positive sign graph, so we're going to make it A value is going to be 5. Next thing we're going to find is we're going to find our B value, all right? But before we find our B value, we need to find uh, the length of our period. Now, the length of our period is the distance from beginning all the way to end. You can see we plot this out from here all the way to the end. So we have, from here's where we started, here's where we finished. But you don't have to draw the whole graph to figure that out. Hopefully you can see right here, this is a quarter of the way there. This is a quarter. This is a quarter. And this is a quarter. So if a quarter of the way there, from here to here, is just half, you just take 0.5, multiply it by 4. So from here to here, that distance was only a half of a unit. But if we go all the way across, we multiply it by 4, that gets us a total of 2. So our period is a total of 2 units 
law. I'm just going to write this down if you're taking notes or making your own graph to go with this. So, once we have our period, which is 2 units long, then we're going to use our formula for the period, which is 2 pi divided by b will always equal the value of the period. And our period is 2 over 1. Do a little cross multiplication. And we get 2b equals 2 pi. So you can kind of see what our b value will equal. We divide both sides by 2. B equals pi. So all I'm going to do is say my B value is pi, and I'm going to write our whole equation here. So our whole equation is going to be L, L of T equals 5, sine, open parentheses. I'm going to put pi, then the letter T, close the parentheses, and put plus 7. One thing I suggest that you do before you type it into the Khan Academy. Sorry, my daughter just walked in. What do you need? Nothing. Sure. Doing a video right now. Okay. All right, we're going to attempt to type this into Desmos right here to check it. So um, you don't have to use function notation. You can just use y equals. All right, but uh, I'm just going to put y equals right here. Type in 5. Hit sign open parentheses, you can just type in pi if you wanted to, um, pi. Put the letter, um, I'm going to put the letter x instead of t. Close parentheses and put plus 7. Alright. One thing you, you're going to want to make sure that you do is up here where you have a little gear symbol, is you want to make sure that you're in radians, not degrees. If you're in degrees, it doesn't work. Radians so it does work. All right, and you'll notice that we have a point here at 0, 7, and the very first point that you see that's a maximum, it's half and a 12. The next thing you always want to do is you want to type in your midline. Y equals 7 is our midline, and it allows you to be able to see the points. Now, if you want to restrict the domain and the range on your graph, just go right here. We're going to restrict this right here. We'll say, let's go ahead and start at 0, and we'll finish it at, we'll say, 2. Pi. All right, and for the y, we'll start at zero and go all the way up to, we'll say fourteen. All right, kind of gives you a good idea of the graph. So there we go. There's our midline. There's our maximum. And once again, the, you can see this right here is one revolution all the way around the unit circle. So you want to make sure that when you are looking at this, here, hold on a second, I get a good picture. This is what you're trying to see. It goes up, down, back up again. And that's our function right there. So now I'll go over here to the Khan Academy. I'll make sure I type it in as nice, accurately as possible. Open up. We'll have a little bit of a pi right there. The letter T next to it. And we'll put plus 7. And then you hit check. All right, we'll do another one. All right, and this one looks like we're going to be doing a cosine graph. So we're going to be building this in terms of uh, cosine instead of sine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and make our graph for the next one. All right, it looks like Vlad is playing on a swing set. It's horizontal distance, d of t, and meters from center, where being behind center means being a negative distance as a function of time can be modeled by a sinusoidal expression of the form a cosine b of t, sorry, b times t plus d. It says at t equals zero, when he pushes off, he is one meter behind center, which is as far back as he goes. The swing reaches the center at pi over six seconds later. It's kind of a difficult one. So we're going to go ahead and take a screenshot of that. Go back one here. We're going to make a little graph. So if you would, just go ahead and make it with me. All right. So right now, our midline right here, I'm just going to say we have our x-axis. All right. 
m or y axis. In our particular problem, we'll call it uh, d of t. So this is d. And the x axis is t. Um, let's go back to the problem. Wrong one, sorry. It says at t equals 0, he pushes off. When, sorry, when he pushes off, he's one meter behind the center, which is as far back as he goes. All right, so when t is zero, he pushes off, and he's one meter behind center, which is as far back as he goes. That basically means it's talking about the minimum. All right, and one meter behind, that's going to be considered a negative. So we're going to go over here. Oh, I'm sorry, this is... Ron Swanson's Pyramid of Greatness. Let's just take a look at it real quick. All right. Frankness. It's important. All right. Living in the woods. Live off the land. All right. Number one thing for Ron Swan Swanson's is, let's see here. Can you see it? Oh, I think it's honor. If I have to define it, that means you don't have it. So take a look at this Pyramid of Greatness. All right. Let's get back to the problem. All right. So... Right here at t equals 0, right here, this is 0, 0, we're going to go negative 1. So let's, go, let's just go down, we'll call this negative 1. So I'm going to put point right here at 0, negative 1. All right. All right, and then it says the swing reaches the center at pi over 6 seconds later. All right. So at pi over 6, it reaches the center. So we're going to call the center 0. That's going to be our midline. All right, so our midline in this particular case is going to be at y equals 0. So the x-axis actually is our midline. And we're just going to call this, we're going to call this pi over 6. All right, so right here, it comes down. And it reaches its midline right there. All right now, we have to figure out which, we're, we're dealing with a cosine graph. So if it says d of t equals a cosine b of t plus d, let's figure out a, b, and D. So our midline is 0, so we just put D equals 0. Um, our amplitude, that's what we have to figure out. So a negative cosine graph, something we need to take a look at real quick. So let's go over here. Hopefully this will help as you guys see what a negative cosine graph looks like. Um, let's just type it in. Negative cosine of X. There's a good picture of it. So negative cosine graph goes from here all the way up to its maximum and then back down to its minimum. So that's a negative cosine graph. All right. So that's what we that's what we're dealing with. Um, we, we talked about the difference between a positive cosine graph and a negative cosine graph the last video, but I'll just kind of go over them again. Here's a positive cosine graph and a negative one. Positive one and a negative. That doesn't help. We can always highlight this one. You think positive cosine, this is what I want you to look think about. Negative cosine, that's what I want you to think about. So that's what we have right here. So we can tell we are not that far along. If we continue this pattern, all right, we would go all the way up here to a positive one, then we go right back down here to zero, and then we would finish right down here at a negative one. It's not a very good drawing, but you can see that's what we're dealing with. All right, so our amplitude right here, our amplitude, remember, is the distance from the maximum to the midline or from the minimum to the midline. So our distance right there is just one unit. 
So even though our amplitude is equal to 1, our A value is going to be negative 1 because we have a negative cosine graph. Um, our D value is 0. last thing we got to find is our D value. So now we got to think about this. Right now, the distance from right here to right here is pi over 6. And literally, we've only traveled a quarter of the way there. So if we've only traveled a quarter of the way there, from this point right here to this point right here, this distance is only pi over 6. What we have to do is we have to take pi over 6, and we have to multiply it by 4 to get the whole period, the whole length. So we multiply pi over 6 times 4, and we get 4 pi over 6. And yes, most of you are reducing it right now to 2 pi over 3. So that right there, that's the length of our period. Now, the length of our period is not the B value, but it does help us find our B value. Just remember, the period will always be 2 pi divided by B. And R, 2 pi divided by B, is going to equal the period, which is 2 pi over 3. Now, ironically, you don't have to do any cross-multiplication here. Check this out. 2 pi, 2 pi. I wonder what B is equal to. B equals 3. And voila, I'm done. All right? I have all the information I need to build my um, build the equation that they're wanting me to build. So, even if you did cross-multiply, if you cross-multiply, you get 2 pi times b, all right, equals 2 pi times 3, which is a total of 6 pi. And if you divide both sides by 2 pi, you'll still get b equals 3, all right? So even if you don't recognize that if the 2 pi is matched, then b has to equal 3, all right? So we're going to go over here, and we're going to type it, we're going to write everything in. Here's going to be our final answer. It's going to be d of t equals negative cosine. You don't have to put a 1 in, just put negative cosine. All right, the b value is 3, so I put 3t, close parentheses, plus 0. But I don't have to put plus 0. I can just leave it exactly like this, and that's all is required. So over here, what I'll do is I will go to Desmos, just to make sure everything checks out. I'll put negative cosine. Go over here, put an open parentheses, type in a 3. All right, and let's take a look at it, see if this works. Oh, and you also, you don't have to, but you can put y equals 0, because that is the that is the midline. So we're starting at negative 1, which is 1 meter behind, and then at pi over 6, it gets right there at 0. Those are the two points that they were, we were asking us to use. If you go back to the original problem, which is right there. There it is. All right. Pi, six, pi over 6 seconds later, you are at center. So now I'm going to go ahead and type this into Khan Academy. And we will call this video complete. Negative cosine, open parentheses, 3, and then we're going to use the letter T instead of X. So make sure you use the letter T if it says D of T. And that's it. That's all you got to do. All right, I hope this finds you well, and I will make another video coming soon. I know you're excited.